and on this one troubleshooting nice okay we might, we might just kick off in the case uh, so okay welcome welcome everybody. Um, and as far as i know this is a combined like docker and kubernetes sort of group so i'd also be curious how many we've got from each of those interest groups um, obviously they have right we might see if we can whiz together a bit of a poll on that one okay i might just pop everybody on mute ju just for one, one sec right. so hey, do you want to just unmute uh, mute everyone there we go okay so everybody's now muted apart from the trainers hopefully so scott and angus you can still hear me you're muted both of you but you can unmute yourself i'm assuming that you can okay so yeah welcome everybody we, we will crack on thank you very much for joining us very very excited to be here so is my dog that's sleeping on the floor if you hear any sort of noises it's golden retriever um, yeah, welcome everybody. We, we live in a very, very fast changing world. Uh, who could have seen or foretold this stuff happening over the last two or three weeks? Um, who cares? Change, change or die. Uh, I think Charles Darwin was probably pretty correct uh, way before I banged on about that rubbish. Okay, so it's all about stay, staying positive and staying focused. And if there are mountains in front of us, let's just let's just go around them. You know, so nothing is going to stop us to be able to get some good stuff out to you, you ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so what we're going to be having a little chat about today, we've got, we've got one awesome speaker and we've got another one. Let me tell you just over like 20 seconds about my, my day today. Renting out my four-bedroom four house, had to get the cleaners in today. Awesome. Medical emergencies. There was two of them. One of which was, was very sad. It was a uh, death um, of uh, somebody that works in and around the groups very, 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 very closely. Uh, so sending out positive thoughts for her. She knows who she is. Um, I, I got a call from uh, Kelly a few hours back. So Kelly, it was going to be our second speaker today. Awesome, awesome dude. He's in hospital with a drip in his arm. Nothing to do with uh, the lurgy. Um, Stephen. Yeah. Yes. Scott. So the beginner. Okay. There we go. Okay, so you're chatting so you can hear me. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, job searching. One hour technical support call to the guys that, um, associated with this platform. Uh, yeah. So Kelly. Kelly had had to bow out. We, you know, which is terrible, and we're feeling really bad for him, obviously. Um, which means that somebody else had to step up at incredibly short notice. If that person can put their hand up, please. Oh no, it's me doing the second talk. So you're going to have a really, really clever person <laughs> who's going to be having a chat. That'll be Angus up first, and uh, then you're going to have me, who's going to be telling you how to use Terraform to be able to spin up. Uh, some stuff that's very near and dear to Angus's heart. Terraform to spin up an EKS cluster and how you can uh, configure a bit basic tooling to be able to access that cluster. So there we go. Um, good, let's, let's get cracking. So just a quick shout out to our community sponsors uh, that have helped us. Um, We've obviously had to re rearrange the face to faces. So welcome so everyone that has joined. I see we've got another seven people join. Um, yeah. Please feel free to answer the poll that we've got running at the moment. Yep, and we've got the little chat and, bar on uh, the left hand side. As you can see, there's a lot of people here with a mixture of uh, Kubernetes experience. Most people are saying looking to learn or are knowledgeable. Um, we've got one that's godlike. Godlike. So I think that's Fantastic. really good. Um, so whoever is expert and godlike, you know. Feel free to share your experience in the chat. Um, also, feel free to, you know, answer questions as they come up because that this is what tonight is about. It's about sort of learning and sharing and, you know, being part of a larger community. So definitely, you know, we don't know it all um, and we want everyone 
out there that's here tonight to actually actively participate in the chat as we go through the meetup. Thanks, Scott. Okay, so we we have a new platform. We're going to be firing out a couple of polls at you. Please, please do contribute. It's really, really important because we're going to be asking your opinion about what we should be, you know, what, what went well tonight, what didn't go well tonight, and what you want to see next time. Okay, so please do not ignore them. We really value uh, your Hello. opinion. Okay, and finally, we'll we'll crack on. I'm just making sure there's nothing else we've got there. Yeah, any any. No, questions? so it's a really good question, actually. So this session is one individual session. The next session, um, anyone who wants to attend that, you will definitely need to rejoin. Um, they are separate sessions. Um, that's one of the things that we're still sort of figuring out in terms of the platform is what the um, how we can run the sessions um, and do a longer session and so on because the sessions are timed right they are time bound yeah. but definitely a lot of fun um, hope people learn lots of things and you know stick around for the second session definitely we'll be kicking off really shortly yeah, what I'm going to do is I'll just post up in the in the chat here the URL for for the second the second sesh. It was on every single meetup page that you've ever been to over the last little while. There's chat separate URL. There we go. I am pretending that I am the awesome Kelly Griffin on that one. Um, yes, yeah, so please do re register for that if if you want to attend. That URL should be working just fine. In about three quarters of an hour, three quarters of an hour's time. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Oh, good. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to hand over to um, Angus to talk about some um, stuff and things. Uh, he'll give a, a quick sort of intro: who he is, what he is, what excites him, and what he's going to be talking about tonight. Um, we're going to have a little chat to, towards the end. If anybody is looking for employment at this point. If there's any individuals looking for jobs, any companies looking for resource or any recruiters that have got position, can you please post into uh, the chat? Okay, so this is going to be really, really good for the uh, for the community. Maybe we can have a conversation about how, how relevant DevOps and DevSecOps is going to be as the virus comes along after the talk. Okay, so please do, if you're looking, please post into the chat there. Okay, that's probably plenty for me. I'm going to extremely seamlessly uh, pass over to uh, Angus. Here we go. Good luck, sir. Hey, <laughs> sorry I'm back. That was a that was a remarkably quick chat. Uh, let me just see what's happening. In the meantime, if uh, Scott, if you can just sing us a song, please, that would be awesome. Okay, what I might do is just try and transfer. 
the session back over uh, to Angus. Okay. Okay, um, I have no idea where Angus has just gone there. I'm sure that he's having a bit of a, a bit of a stress attack there. Um, Scott, can can you hear me just now? And if I can maybe ask um, Andrew Hastings or Gregor Gregor Ashoff, can you hear me as well? You should not be muted at this point. Let me go into chat. Can people hear me okay? Yes, we can hear. hear me now. Testing, testing. You mate? Yep. Okay, we're all good. That's right, let's let's get cracking. I will do my talk first. Uh, right, so where were we? Okay, materials. Okay, podcast. Can we all see brewing your own Kubernetes cluster? Somebody can just give me give me a nod. We can. Awesome. Okay, let's get cracking. So this this is all about uh, last minute me putting together something that I had actually started putting together this talk a while back. It certainly wasn't complete, so it's a little bit rough and ready. But hey, who cares? Let's get going. So this is all about um, the many and very different ways that you can create a Kubernetes cluster um, to begin experimenting on. Kubernetes um, ha has got, as you would imagine, it's got quite a lot of moving parts um, under the hood. Um, if you go with a hosted version, obviously, with one of the cloud providers, your AWS, your Googles, your uh, Microsofts, <clears throat> then a lot of that complexity is managed by, by them. But obviously, you do have to pay for it. Um, so this is going to show you uh, a little cheeky but not pretentious, pretentious way that you're able to spin up your own uh, Kubernetes cluster running on AWS uh, by using uh, Terraform. OK. Um, we don't have any questions as of yet. So that's all very well and good. Let's seamlessly move on to the next slide. Awesome. You should be seeing the next slide. If you're not, somebody can shout. OK, what, what is Kubernetes? I'm sure that everybody's pretty well aware of what, of what the situation is with Kubernetes itself. From an architectural perspective, uh, there's two, two sort of main components in there, I suppose, at a very high level. Uh, there's what's known as the Kubernetes control plane. And there's the Kubernetes workers. So if you think of the Kubernetes control plane uh, as like the mothership, and the actual Kubernetes workers are, in this particular case, an EC2 instances running uh, Docker. So the control plane will make sure that all of the, um, the Kubernetes workers uh, are all managed uh, and that the jobs are all put out. It'll look after all of the um, IP addressing for you, the port forwarding, all the rest of that stuff. So there's two two different ways that you can spend some money on Kubernetes, like as far as going hosted goes. Uh, obviously, since um, a a AWS or whoever the cloud provider are, are managing and obscuring all that uh, complexity behind the control plane, uh, you generally have to pay a per, a per hour uh, fee for that. So I know with um, Amazon, your mileage may vary with, you know, with the other guys. 
Um, I think they recently reduced their cost from 20 cents an hour to 10 cents an hour uh, or something like that. So that's, that's lots of fun. And obviously, if you're spinning up the Kubernetes workers, so the actual beasts that are doing all the grunt work, uh, then you're paying for an um, EC2 resource on that. It's exactly the same. So you pay for, for the compute that you consume. Okay, so control plane is charged by the hour, just like the worker instances. Let's move on. Okay, so you can you can create a Kubernetes cluster on your local LAPI if you wanted to. Um, there are some reasonably simplistic ways of doing this, uh, including if you've got Docker Desktop, you know, for example, um, somebody saying that they cannot hear the speaker. Uh, is everybody able to hear me now? I'm getting it suggested that I may not be hearable. Can somebody go on chat? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Okay, I'm sorry for whoever can't hear me. Turn up your hearing aids. Okay, Docker Desktop. Okay, so Docker Desktop, you've probably got it running on your uh, on your laptop just now. Uh, if you have a look at Docker Desktop, there's a little drop down, the little icon which says Enable Kubernetes Cluster. It's it, it's as simple as that. The first time that you enable the Kubernetes cluster, it needs to pull down a whole bunch of uh, Docker containers. Um, the second time you boot it, when Docker comes up, Kubernetes com you know, uh, comes up as well. If you're using Docker stack, um, it will natively deploy onto Kubernetes as well. It's probably the easiest entry point that's not going to cost you anything. OK, somebody oh, said they couldn't do a minute. Oh, oh. That's very interesting. That Maybe they they know more about Kubernetes than I do. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me. I'm just going to mute everybody for a second. There we go. Okay, so we can go. Uh, you can use things like Docker Desktop. It's really easy. Minikube is another way. Traditionally, they've been able to spin up the stuff. There's even vagrant recipes out there as well, which will create the control plane and it'll it'll um, give you a couple of workers as well. An easier way of doing it, especially if you've got somebody else's credit card, uh, you can use uh, hosted offerings. Obviously, that's going to that's going to make it a little bit easier to create the cluster. But the way that you actually access the services that are running on the cluster is is a bit more obscure if you're running it on somebody else's machine. We'll come to that. Okay, so. Local install, that sounds like I'm repeating myself. Fantastic. So Terraform, if, if, you've, not, if you've not used it, um, I'm just trying to remember why I put this particular slide in here. Anyway, fabulously interesting. The, the latest version of Terraform is, is a major release update. So if you do have to use Terraform to be able to uh, provision all of your um, EKS cluster, um, there, there may be some of the Terraform um, manifests or whatever you want to call them that may be in an older version of Terraform. So I'm just giving you that bit of information uh, so you can learn how to update the syntax as is required. Anyway, uh, hopefully you won't have to do that. Okay, so EKS, from a, a non-production perspective, uh, obviously, there, there's there's a heck of a lot of stuff that you can do to bolt down uh, Kubernetes. There's a lot of different companies that are helping uh, that, that can help you with that. Uh, coming along to De DevSecOps is, in Sydney is generally a pretty good little place to learn how to do that. Now that we've got the streaming platform, we may be able to provide uh, some Kubernetes um, securing um, a little bit more consumable via webinar. OK, so if you just Google Terraform AWS EKS, um, the particular link, uh, this the link down to Terraform AWS EKS is the very first one that you'll see up at the top of the pile. Uh, so that that's the code that you're going to need. Uh, let me just have a quick look. OK, no other comments coming in. That's good. Um, so what we're going to do, what, once we have cloned that software, uh, we're going to uh, CD into the Terraform AWS CKS examples 
basic directory. <coughs> this makes it very, very simple. All we need to do is just um, update the variables.tf file. Um, I, I added, let me show you. Um, where, okay, so when you're sharing your screen and you've got three monitors, it's always a bit of a, let's have a dig on through. And see, I can't find my terminal. Anyway, I'm going to come back to that. So, Stephen, there's a bit of a uh, flannel versus calico discussion in the chat. Are you able to just give a little bit of color to the differences and why you'd use one over the other? If not, on why um, you use one, Angus, feel free to give your opinions in the chat, right? Yep. What I might do is just ca carry on with uh, with the Prezo. Anybody's got any questions? Obviously, you, you can fire them up uh, in chat. Okay. So if I was to take my little terminal window, I'm going to make one one more try of, of sharing my sharing my screen here. I saw lots of screens. I just didn't see my terminal window. <laughs> oh, there we go. Come on. Screen share. Clear this permission to ask again. Okay, there we go. Hey, I found my terminal. Awesome. Let me see. Wow, that's quite a small window. Is there any danger that you can read that? If you can pop a little. Pop a little note in chat, please. Can anybody read the writing on the screen? I might just embiggen it a bit. Anybody else in chat? Can you let me know if you can read what's on the screen? All good. Awesome. So I've changed the directory uh, into the basic example. If we have a look at variables.tf, what I've done is I've just updated the default to be an AP Southeast 2 for our particular region. Um, and also, um, I update in the main.tf file. I've got this in the, in the notes, which I will share after this talk as well. Uh, in here, the cluster name, oh, um, all I've done is I've just pre-pended pre something that makes sense to me. So in KTS rocks dash EKS. Okay, so I'm just trying to see if there's any questions. Okay, I'm hoping that everybody has been able to see that. Uh, and that, that was basically all of the configuration that was required. Okay, so I'll stop my screen share, put back over here again. Okay. So as it said, I updated a bit variables.tf. Um, I also prepended the name of my cluster, so it makes a little bit, a little bit more sense. And I did a Terraform in it. Uh, obviously, you need to download and install ter Terraform from uh, the wonderful HashiCorp's uh, websites. Um, Terraform in it will pull down the the modules that are required for the Terraform AWS EKS code to work. So there's a couple of modules, including the AWS one that needs to come down. So that Terraform in it might, it might take whatever, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, all, only once. Uh, then we're doing our, our Terraform plan, uh, outputting that plan into uh, a file that we can then apply um, in the next command there, as you can see. Okay, so moving on. What we do at the end of that is we end up with a control plane that is configured. So by that, I mean that if I visit um, Amazon's console, I can have a quick look at um, I can have a quick look at the um, EKS section, and it's it's going to show me that there's a cluster there. And you can also see here we've got um, an uh, auto scaling group of workers as well. So 
as the, um, as the demand grows, maybe you are sort of expanding the number of the amount of capacity that you need. You know your replication sets, as they talk about in Kubernetes. Then you can, you can create um, auto scaling groups to, for the workers to be able to accommodate for that growth and also reduction again, which is cool. Uh, we can override any of the compute that is specified in the um, in that code, which means that we can specify if we're just playing around here, we can even specify like a maybe something as low as like a T2 micro uh, for your workers, which means it's going to keep your costs down to either ne you know nearly free um, in effect. Okay. Um, so then we start to do a little bit of a test. So this obviously assumes that you've got the um, AWS CLI already installed. So if we can do AWS EKS list clusters, that is going to use the .AWS credentials. If you spell it as I've got it on the screen, you may have a few issues. Okay, so AWS EKS list clusters. Let me just see if I can pull that up. On my screen, where are we? There we go. So that was AWS, oops, AUX, uh, AWS uh, EKS list clusters. There we go. Okay, so here, here's one I prepared earlier. So this. I'm able to share your screen. Uh, sharing it is always better, right? There we go. I do apologize. I thought I was sharing already. AWS EKS. Got it. Thank you. Clusters. And that is on to AWS. And it shows me what I've got configured, including uh, the the name that I pre in the main.tf file. This is different. It's one that I, I prepared a little shows that at an AWS level, we've got the, uh, we have the permissions, the roles and all the rest of that stuff configured correctly to be able to show us what clusters are running um, on the EKS control plane. Okay, so what's the next step? Let's find out kids, here we go. So we proved it at AWS level, we've got the um, authorization and authentication bits are looking as if they might be working. Okay, so I have a cluster. How am I gonna use it? So you've got a cluster in um, AWS. How, how do you actually connect onto it? Um, well, you need to uh, install a little tool called Kube Control, C uh, Kube CTL um, is one of the more popular ones. I'm not sure if there's any others to tell the truth. Uh, it's a Go binary, so it's all completely self-contained. Uh, download that. It's got the link on the page for you there. Um, so what, what happens when you run that Terraform code is it spits out all of the authentication details and the certificate details, I should say, that Kube Control is going to need. Now, all that... All that um, security information, authentication information is held in your, um, it could be held in any file, but typically it's under your home directory dot cube directory. Um, and the file is called config. So if I was just to pull up um, my share screen for a second, and this time I'll actually share it, which is even better. There we go. So we can see uh, that there's a out.tf. What's the name of that file again? There we go. Okay. So if, um, there is a file called cube control where, oops, cube control that gets created as a result of running this. And what this does, what this file contains. It's all Stephen, of the you started a kube cuddle versus kube control war. Oh, sorry, say again, Scott? You've started the okay. uh, nameless kube cuddle versus kube control war. There's two ways to say it. You're either kube cuddle 
or your kube control and um, right. then writing words or kube config you're talking about yeah so this is kube ctl that i'm talking about which reads the home directory dot kube control file in this kube control it's got all of the security information the certificate stuff that is required to allow kube control to be able to authenticate and do stuff okay so all, all that information uh, um, is accessible via the terraform uh, output as well so there's all sort of stuff in their security certificates blah 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 so to make it easy like if you're just starting with uh, kubernetes what you can do is just take that kube control file and copy it over the top i'm trying to uh, make this as readable as possible it may not be so i'll go to cube oops it's wrapping off the off the edge of the screen i'll pull it just in one second. So there's dot cube config. So I'm not sure if we can see that. I'll try and pull the screen in just a little bit. There we go. So it wraps it. So just copy the cube, cube control file. Uh, sorry, cube config file over the top of your own cube dot cube slash config. So then what we do is we need to do some tests. Okay. So if I recall correctly, what the next slide wrote is cube control. In fact, I'm going to show you the next slide before I execute this command. There's a reason for it. OK, so down the bottom of this slide, you can see I've copied the cube control file into my home directory dot cube directory slash config. Now we'll go to test. We know it works at Amazon credentials level, but will cube control be able to work now as well? So here's a little test. We can do kube control space cluster dash info. So I just know that you're going to get this error message, most likely. Um, unable to connect to the server, get credentials, blah, 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 blah. So what uh, kube, kube CTL uses by default is the AWS IAM authenticator. So this is uh, what this does is it, as far as I know, it generates temporary um, STS tokens. I'm sure that I'm going to get absolutely uh, corrected as appropriate by Gus as required. Uh, so we need to have um, STS tokens to allow kube control to be able to authenticate and do what it what it needs to do. So kube control runs the AWS IAM authenticator, which you need to download as a single binary, make sure it's in your path. Uh, hopefully, it will then it will run the AWS IAM authenticator. It'll get its uh, temporary um, STS tokens, and then hopefully, Cube Control will then work. Okay, so if I just move on to the next slide, Cube Control cluster info. Okay, so if I whip back onto my screen share for a second. And go to there. Oh, can't remember that decision. That's okay. How we do Q control space cluster info. Sorry, Scott. No can say screen. No can see screen. A bit upset. Uh, just as well, actually. This Q control is not working. <laughs> Is that me preventing people from seeing the goodness? Is anybody yeah, beautiful? Yeah, you're, you're, you're not so bad yourself, Scott. Um, okay, so if I do the cube control cluster info, um, it's it's connecting on to um, out, or it's authenticating using that authenticator uh, that I mentioned before, uh, which is the temporary SES token, which you don't need to. Um, and it's showing me that the Kubernetes master, which is the control plane, the API, running at that particular address, and there's a bit of some DNS stuff happening as well, which you don't know about. So this is success. Uh, we, we have all the authentication authorization stuff is working to allow Kube uh, control to be able to see that the cluster is actually running. 
So this is one jubilant point. If you get you get to the bit, you've done well so far. Okay, so uh, let's just have a look at the the slides. Okay, so now we can do some stuff for the cluster. So let's give it a try. Here's a little um, deployment job, uh, which will run. I think it's a, cu a couple of Nginx servers. In fact, you, you can see it here. Um, it says it's doing an Nginx deployment. Uh, it talks about the actual container down the bottom. The container name is um, Nginx, the image it's going to pull down, so the Docker image, what ports it's going to expose within Kubernetes itself. Uh, and it shows you down the bottom of the screen how to apply it. Okay, so if I was to whip back onto my screen, I can't, oh, there we go. Uh, let me just see. I'm just sneaking onto another screen so I can copy and paste that line. It's not quite so easy copying and pasting from PDFs. Have the presentation rather than your terminal, Stephen. Yeah. And I'm feeling bad about that. So here's here's the share. People can see my terminal window again. So all, all I've done is I have co copied and pasted that line. So we know that Cube Control is working. It's authenticating. It's authorized to be able to do some stuff. <clears throat> So it's now speaking to um, EKS, and it's parsing that simple little YAML file. It's taking its sweet time, which it doesn't normally do. <laughs> Says him. Right, come on, chop, 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 chop. Right. Maybe get Scott just to sing you a quick song in the meantime. Live demo gods, you got to love them. Come on. Poll on where everyone has their Kubernetes installation installed. So if everyone can have a bit of a, a crack and answer that, that would be fantastic. Super no awesome. option for all of the above. Sorry about that. Mate. There you go. Okay, so it's come back. And it said that deployment.apps nginx deployment is it, uh, which is cool. So I can do like um cube control get get pods for example i don't know why it took other than i've got a really 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 old web connection here there we go already it has created two um nginx servers part of that deployment and it's probably it'll have created the service associated with them as well such that it can actually be exposed to the outside world there we in mind. Uh, I don't know whether it should have created a service. I probably should have checked if I was doing a talk, you know, and wanted to prepare. That's okay. Right. Uh, so that's so that's if anyone is able to uh, give Stephen a pointer, just yell out in the chat. That's fine. Yeah. So there's cube control. We've done an apply. If we want to get rid of those uh, those pods, so think about if you're not overly familiar with Kubernetes, think about pods as sort of kind of like containers. It, it, it's not like that, but you can, it's quite easy to start thinking like that and, and to get the hang of it. So I've created a couple of, let's call them containers uh, with um, Nginx running on them. And now I'm just running kube control delete from that particular file and it's delete all the that were required to be able to do that, including uh, you know, deleting the the service, the pods, the, the, to the any, yeah, all on. Okay, so it's all gone. So now I do uh, get pods again. There we go, it's gone. So you might think that actually prevented you from running. Haha, <laughs> of course it does because the actual Kubernetes workers are still running. So you know the clock is still running on that one okay so that has that's worked sort of kind of as it should have i think which is awesome 
And then we've got the little command there just to check the actual deployment in isolation. If I just wanted to see uh, what was happening with that um, Nginx deployment job, then that's the command that I would have used. OK, so that's sort of, I think. OK, with regards to build, building a local cluster, you can figure that out yourself. The, this is where my, my time started to run out when I had about an hour to prepare this talk um, earlier on today. So you can have a little play with Docker Desktop yourself. Uh, it's really pretty easy. And I was going to suggest um, how for talks, please do put your put your thoughts into the chats into the chat window here. This is just a, a couple of ideas uh, that I was going to run past you for ne next uh, next session. Uh, if people have got lot, lots of Docker files, uh, how how do you actually migrate them to Kubernetes? You know that that might be interesting. You know how do you maybe you've got some you know Docker Compose files. Uh, how how do you migrate them into you know Kubernetes syntax? Um, so I mentioned when you run Kubernetes with uh, hosted, uh, with you know with one of so the. We have the, a, a question about uh, egress controller as well. The next session. Egress controller, there is interest. I was just about to give the egress, background on egress. what. Oh. Yeah. So when when you deploy Docker on your local laptop. Everything's awesome. You can just go to localhost 127.001. <laughs> I nearly forgot that one. On a specific port, and that and that is your Docker. Sorry, your Kubernetes um, interface for your local machine. <clears throat> so if you were to run up an, an nginx server, exactly, you know, for example, an nginx uh, deployment, and expose it out on port 80, you can just go to Open up browser one two seven zero zero one um, on port eighty, and maybe this is a bad example. You put on eighty one, uh, so you go to one two seven zero zero one on port eighty one. You're gonna you're gonna see your web server, okay? But what happens if you run up an EKS cluster, for example? How do you expose those services? And that's where a uh, reverse proxy uh, or something that's a little bit more sort of specialized in the Kubernetes field, they talk about um, ingress controllers. So there's products like um, traffic uh, for playing in non-prod uh, is, the, is the advice that I have heard. Um, Nginx is reasonably, uh, in fact, I think I'm contractually bound to say it's bulletproof, haven't I, Scott? <laughs> it's an open source project. You can say whatever you like about it, man. Yeah, it is. Even even though Scott is actually pretty closely affiliated, it's a it's a super product, and you should have a look at it. Anyway, um, so those of you who are interested in learning how to convert like Docker files or Docker Compose files into Kubernetes, you can put it up on the chat. And be interested in learning about um, ingress controllers. How do you deploy um, a cluster of web servers or like a, a lamp stack, hypothetically, or something something like that? How do you deploy it? And then, how do you expose it to the outside world? Uh, so, if you can put your put your feelings in the chat window on that one. Lots of people are using traffic in production. I take it back. Maybe traffic is an absolutely awesome thing. It did seem to be very simple. Um, my inexperienced ear was talking to somebody uh, who knows a little bit about it, and they were saying, "If you've got That's an opportunity." Really interesting, Stephen. Um, yep. The two. Sort of ingress controls that I'm seeing a lot of at the moment uh, traffic and um, I mean I'll, uh, I'll say traffic right because it's really because of the simplicity um, people are really loving being able to use it right so and I'm going to talk with Vincent Rullier as someone who can probably do a talk about that right okay. So who's um, anybody out there using using tra traffic, uh, hypothetically speaking, in production? Maybe unmute, unmute the entire group for a bit of a discussion. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's see how we go with that. How hard can it be, eh? Have a couple, a couple of hundred people all talking at the same time. Let's see what happens. Um, just 
trying to come on chop chop there we go unmute all okay you're unmuted this is very very scary speaker two and the mc do appear to be muted maybe not okay yeah so is um, anybody actually using tra um, traffic in production at all? yes uh rajesh yeah hey, oh, rajesh. hey. Oh. Yes, uh, we've been using traffic for production. So basically what we use is, uh, so first of all, we're managing Kubernetes on-prem. As a result of that, uh, the whole of the network policies, which is the ingress and egress rules, which are uh, pre-built policies that needs to be defined uh, as part of the capabilities. So it's all being integrated as part of the network policy. So you have a network policy for ingress, where it says is like what are the inbound ports and where is it coming from where's the origin and where is the destination is getting into and what ports it's allowed and the same goes is like what ports uh what are the uh, what is the network ips which goes out of the pod and what trading on whether it's uh, uh http or https if it is https then you need to have tls based security encrypted so you need to, you need yep. to have a reference to a tls then the tls also you can basically incorporate and bind it as a secret so that you just need to refer secret as the reference as opposed to the TLS as a chunk. Uh, uh, so all this goes as part of that. Yes, uh, ingress is nothing but any traffic which is coming inside the network, Kubernetes cluster, all the way to the port. Uh, that involves your ingress controllers, which are engine nginx ingress controllers. Then as Steven talked about um, uh, services, uh, uh, sorry, ingress definition, then ingress definition comes bind to a service and from a service map to uh, a pod uh, and service also has got an associated endpoint under the covers. Like if you say kubectl uh, get endpoints, get SVC, um, you see a service there. And also if you say kubectl get endpoints, you see an endpoint which is associated with the service, which is which, which is where behind the scene, the net how Kubernetes operate, which you don't really see it. We don't give much importance to the endpoints, but endpoints really, when port, you're sending a poor network traffic which is outside, for instance, uh, let's say I have to connect to a box, right? So I have, uh, for example, from my uh, like from my microservice, I'm originating a request to a box. The box is basically a network which sits outside. Uh, so if your if your organization only allows certain destinations to go out, that's where endpoints comes to the picture, which you have to clearly define it in your in the, uh, sorry in your uh, network policy as an egress route. So egress is any traffic going out on a port, on an endpoint, and on a range. Uh, so you have to re uh, uh, you, or you have to define at the IP side uh, range level and say, OK, it's what a 32-bit addressing. Uh, uh, if so, how many ports I should allow, how many IP ranges I should allow to go out so that it opens a wider traffic so that uh, the egress rule is defined as wider. And some organizations, they go very tighter at saying, OK, this is the only port and IP. That sort of thing. OK, I've got, um, th thank you, Rajesh. I've got an urgent poll for you, Scott, please. If you can just poll people to find out if um, Rajesh is or is not one of our next speakers to talk about uh, setting up Ingress stuff. <laughs> hey, we're doing this democratically. <laughs> That's all I can yeah. say. So I've done like uh, probably like a year and a half of this, uh, especially for the like Stephen. You know that we've done for the Stephen also visited once uh, for that thing how we've been set up. Um, yeah, it's, that's what it is. Like the majority of a lot of security base under the covers, very tight under security where you won't even have access to the outside world. So you're operating on a Kubernetes cluster where there is no access to the Docker Hub. Uh, no access to the outside world. So how do you successfully operate on that? Love those. those are the things. Yeah. Love those. I've worked in TS environments where you've got air gaps and stuff like that. So I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. Awesome. All right. Oh, you didn't hear anything from... Did it? Did anybody actually hear what Rajesh was just saying? I, I know I did. Can somebody out in... In user land, so to speak. Can you give me a clue that you just heard what Rajesh was saying? Or not? Did he hear something? Yes. OK. OK, yeah. Just so just generally, with, uh, are we, one of, is one of the themes that we're sort of exploring in the future talks 
one is sounds like ingress and egress another sounds like um sort of policy management you know so ingress and egress things come through pretty strongly what else do people think okay we've got it we're all quiet so that means listen if anybody's got any ideas uh, please, please do post them up. Um, what we may do, or in fact, just a quick, a quick shout out, which I never did. Uh, I mentioned some of our community sponsors. Um, site, site 24 by 7. Yeah. Uh -huh. 